happy Monday, everyone. I'm super excited to see you today again to make more art. We're going to keep it really simple today and just work with a little bit of watercolor, um, paper, brushes, and we're going to need the sun, which is why I'm like being blinded just a little bit right now. Um, so thank you for joining us. Remember, IG Live um, through the Art of Ed is your chance to create art and kind of like your specific allotted time to sit down and make some art. So today we'll be making kind of shadow and highlight artwork um, using the sun, but if you don't have a sunny window to sit in at all, then you can go ahead and grab like a lamp or just somewhere where you can create some sort of shadows. Um, if you can't set that up, maybe you can manufacture a certain type of space where you can have a little bit of shadow. I've got like the sun blasting in today. It's super bright and I'm going to just keep it right here on my tabletop and I'll show you how to set that up. Um, but again, those of you that are joining us, just a friendly reminder that each week on Mondays, with the exception of holidays, we always have a time for us to create art together. Um, and today, it's just gonna be me. So if you're interested in um, joining us for more or watching previous chats, you can go ahead and check out the IGTV tab. So I'm Sarah Krajewski, we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna just kind of scoop you down here, y'all, for this little super solid transition. Yes. Okay. Hopefully you're not too blinded. It's like aggressively bright. Y'all, this is like intense. But what we're going to do today is kind of like an abstract painting um, using some shadows, lights, shapes to sort of get us started without having to think too much about a composition. So I grabbed some watercolor paper. I've got a pencil to start with some of my shapes. That way, once I get my shapes down, I can technically close the blinds or kind of move away from the sun a little bit. And that's going to make it easier for me to see without being blinded like I am right now. Um, and then we'll have some watercolor. And you can add other things, of course, too. There's no wrong or right way to do this. So we're going to get started first with pencil, your paper, and then I'm just using plants today. I have like plants are always good because you can move them around pretty quickly. But then you're going to just practice finding some sort of shadow shape that you like on your paper. So like this leaf right here. I've got this like tall friend happening in this area, but I have to like figure out how to get it on my page. Cause I don't want too like too much open shadow space. You know what I mean? Like this circle here, but I do want something interesting. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What are our thoughts on this? I feel like I'm missing this. The best part though, right here, like this part. Okay. So once you have your composition set up, how you'd like, then you're just going to go back in and kind of do the, the most classic elementary chalk, uh, <laughs> prompt which is somebody stand up and then somebody else trace their shadow but we're doing that in a paper version today um tell me if your students do the like shadow tracing it is such a classic but it's super fun and fun to be the person that poses too and where are all y'all joining us from today we have a hefty group of friends but i'm trying to see who's joining us but also working at the same time. So again, I'm just grabbing a pencil. You can use a marker or whatever you'd like and just tracing kind of lightly around where your shadows are. My shadows are pretty fuzzy, partly because they're just farther away from the um, light source. So they're gonna be a little bit more of a fuzzy edge compared to something really sharp as if it were right close to that light source or like right here by that edge, it's gonna be nice and sharp. But I'm gonna trace. And then I'm gonna just go back in. I might honestly even close my blinds so that y'all can see this a little bit better without it being incredibly blinding. And then we're just gonna paint. And I like these kind of prompts or abstractions, especially to do with students, but also just for myself, because sometimes I feel like when I have a blank page, I've got ideas, I have things I wanna try, but it's nice to just play and have a prompt of something to do without you know, without having a right or wrong way of what your expectation is of what it looks like. And that's what's happening today with our shadow art. So I've got a couple of these little window openings on my leafy side here. And we're just about good. Okay, I'm gonna reveal it. I hope I didn't lose anything. Okay, oh boy, that's next to impossible to see. See, I told you, this is why I have to put my windows down. Okay, so anyways, this is what our shadow art is looking like. The tracing designs are pretty abstract, keeping it pretty simple. And then we're gonna go back in and paint just a little bit. So I am literally gonna close my blinds because y'all, I don't know about you, but like this is blinding me. So give me like 10 seconds here to close these up. Pretend that I'm being really graceful in the background, even though I'm clearly not. 
Ignore my noises, please. This is what professional Instagram looks like, everyone. Okay, we did it. Oh, I'm really warm from that. Now we are going to take our abstract lines that we created. So maybe you can see it just a little bit more now. The abstract lines and just literally paint either the positive or the negative space or some kind of combination of both of those. Um, I have a, an array of watercolors today because I don't typically gravitate towards watercolors, but I really love them. And so any excuse to just kind of play around is something that I want to do. Now, this book that I have is watercolors. It's this like really interesting um, kind of like very retro version. Apparently this company was originated in 1885, but it's called Pearl Less Transparent Watercolors Nicholson's. And they have these like coated papers that you can drop into water or just like paint right on them and it picks up the pigment from it. So they're like, this is like an entire pack of watercolors. So y'all tell me what kinds of paints you're using today. I'm curious what you're choosing. But I'll use a few of those, but I'm gonna just kind of lay down a couple colors first. And I've got like a random set of some, uh, I don't even know, Le France Bourgeau. I'm really good at French, everyone. Um, but I've got some random set here and then good old fashioned Crayola 16 pack, baby. So I don't have very fancy watercolors, but it doesn't matter. We're just creating today. So I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna paint, I'm trying to decide if I want my positive or negative space filled. Let's try the negative space. So I'm gonna go in the background. And because I used pencil, I can go right up to that edge and make a pretty solid line. But if I had marker or something, then I might have more of a bold outline. But I kind of want the, the um, edge of my watercolor to be the bold part that I see. So I'm gonna mix a couple colors, maybe do some kind of like wet on wet action and sort of fill my space, do a little bit of water in here and just kind of go to town and fill it in. I'm curious, those of you that are painting with watercolor today, do you pre-wet all of your cakes and then start painting or do you, do you get them wet as you decide what to use? Sometimes I'll sit and be like, get a wet, get a wet, get a wet so that they're all kind of like juicy for me. But I don't know if that's a taboo. What do you think? Okay, so we've got my kind of like reddish color here. And we're just looking for the negative space to, to fill in this area. Now, if you want to get kind of funky with it, you could do some scraffito and start scratching into your negative space. You could do um, some splatter painting. You can try some different wet on wet, dry on wet techniques, all sorts of stuff to kind of blend it together. I'm just kind of picking colors randomly and then I'm gonna find my favorite spots once I'm done that sort of surprised me and maybe I'll use those as collage paper. So my expectation is I'm not gonna like love every aspect of this today, um, but it's again, more just that experimental play so that I can be making art, I can be active, I can be using my creative brain and just releasing a little bit of that, um, you know, built up creative energy and then see what happens. So I'm kind of blending it too. Also, if anyone has favorite, I'm just checking who's in here. Um, if anyone has any favorite watercolor artists that you'd love, I would love to hear about those as well because watercolor is just so, so fun. And it's really, uh, like I always just pictured, oh, watercolor, it's just water painting. It's not it, anything too complicated, but to maneuver and like use the watercolors in the way that you can get the desired effects are just so, so um, impressive. So I would love to hear who some of y'all's favorite watercolor artists are. And naturally the human brain is going to turn this what I'm doing right now into imagery. So I'll be like, okay, this looks like the kind of the head of an octopus or this part here looks like, you know, maybe a weird little Simpsons character or something. And that is totally okay. But also sometimes we just fight the urge to have to find answers and find what things are and instead just do it for the love of doing it. Yeah, okay, so this, just to, to, just to show you, this is the Nicholson's Pearless um, paper. I personally am just too 
shall we say lazy i don't want to cut this up and like dissolve it in water even though i know that's like technically the preferred way to do it but i just like tap my brush on here and just pull up some of that paint and then i've got this like super bright vivid yellow it's super super pretty so i'm blending a little bit and i actually kind of like too when the um when there's white spaces that are left over like maybe the watercolor isn't completely filled in so you have those bits of paper popping through and it's very satisfying okay oh boy oh boy now i now i've done it getting crazy with my colors do you ever like i feel like there should be a an undo button <laughs> like an instant regret button when you're painting <laughs> we're like no undo undo this thing immediately but that's okay we're gonna just leave it we're gonna see maybe it'll turn into something that i'm into this like little orange blob it's got a little vibe of its own so again i'm just following my edges here kind of outlining things first and then here, i'll scooch it up for y'all a little bit and then kind of just filling in my spaces now, the original picture that we had shared on um, today's post about our making art moment was um, something that I did as a virtual lesson with my students. So it was really um, pretty simple to do, kind of have students searching somewhere um, and find their own composition. Because again, the, the cool part about some of these abstract uh, ideas is that they're all going to be different. This could be a really fun outdoor activity um, if you're either still in school or doing summer school or something for the beginning of the year just to get outside a little bit. It's always nice to have some things in your back pocket that you can do some outdoor art making um, for those days that are just so beautiful that you can't help but take your students outside. And again just to clarify when we are making these make art with me moments on Mondays um, you know, a lot of times it's nice to tie it back to things you can do in your classroom, but just remember too that you yourself are an artist. You don't need a reason to create. It doesn't need to be homework for your classroom. It doesn't need to be something that you, um, you know, have to prepare for next year. Just come and make with me and make with our guests and have a little time to let loose and not have to think so much about everything. Instead, we'll just be doing a little bit of painting. I really like this part. Like right here, this is vibing with me. So I'm kind of just like combining everything together. Oh, and then I was also gonna say too, on um, the image that we shared, this negative space for that virtual lesson I did with my students, I ended up just suggesting something like coloring with crayon, maybe doing an ombre or something in this space. But I could see even doing like some zen tangling, doing some black and white coloring, um, maybe working, ooh, that's fun. Maybe working with a uh, different material that you've never tried before and just see what it does in that negative space. Um, since it's just regular old paper, but has some interesting shapes and designs around it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna flip this guy this way. And maybe, I mean, sometimes I get overzealous with watercolor and I'll be like working in another area that's already wet for sure. And then I have to be um, like, kind of speedy about it and make sure that I'm, or not speedy, like not too quick about it so that I can still actually paint within um, within the spaces that are dry. So I'm not just trying to paint two things together. That was kind of a jumble of words, but basically I'm trying to say, don't get too quick with watercolor. Give it its time to make a nice solid edge so that if you want to paint next to it, it's not going to blend if you don't want it to blend unless you are into that kind of thing. But this is something that like, when I teach my students too a lot about watercolor, it's like the timing is more of a factor than you would think because things either mix or they're not ready to mix and they don't wanna participate. So it's kind of like that, that give and that take a little bit. When is it just the right wetness or dryness to do the next step? Alrighty. I'm gonna do a couple more spaces here, maybe this one right here. And this is one similar to our past IG lives like visual journaling or um, abstract, uh, just intuitive art making. All of these things, we kind of are just giving you some ideas to get started and then you can take it where you'd like to from there. Maybe this becomes a paper for your next journal description and you wanna just let it dry, then you can write all over it. Maybe it becomes um, some cut up collage pieces for the um, a collage making 
uh, creation similar to how we had an IG Live about that as well. So you don't feel like, hopefully you don't feel like you have to finish every component of it right now, but maybe this just lights your, lights your creative spark a little bit um, and makes you want to keep going. Do y'all have any favorite watercolor techniques that you like always do when you play with watercolor? Mine's probably wet on wet. Like I always just do like little drippity drops and stuff and see what happens. Cause they look like little starbursts. I love it. I'm also thinking now as I'm looking at this, it would be kind of cool to have a really bold contrast. Like even just going back in with maybe a different kind of paint in these open spaces and doing, whoops, doing like some black or something that's really dark and contrasting from the colors would be really interesting. Let's try more of these. Let's check it out. Got a little bit of that orange on here. Woo! Oh, it's so vibrant. This is very satisfying. Although it does kind of look like the color that like initially when it was on, it was just so red. And you know those kids that when they see this color, like that nice bright red, what's the comment they're gonna say? Tell me you know it. It looks like blood every time. Right? But it's not, it's paint. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish this little corner here. Do some more kind of warm colors a little bit. And then I'll probably just let it dry. Maybe go back in with some marker or something and kind of fill this edge a touch. Get it nice and bright. But as a friendly reminder to all of you that are creating with me today, if you have anything that you've been working on um, painting similar to this lesson today or whatever you kind of took your make art with me moment, feel free to share that on your Instagram story. You can tag us at the art of ed and also Go ahead and slap the hashtag on there, hashtag AUEU live, so we can find it nice and easy. Um, and then if I can see some of those stories on there, I will pick someone to win one of our beautiful holographic stickers. Burp, like that. So, just a friendly reminder for you, we'd love to see what you're creating, but of course remember, creating sometimes is just for you. And you just wanna make and let it be, and let all of that that creativity just kind of come out, give you like that meditative type of moment, not have any rules, just see where it takes you. All right, so I'm getting kind of like close-ish here. I might do a few more wet on wet drops because I just can't contain. I just, I have to. Ugh. I'm also picking colors that I would definitely not usually put together, but again, this is an experiment time for me to say well it doesn't matter because I'm not intending I don't have any particular intention with this but I'm like making a commissioned piece I'm just gonna play and see what happens and maybe I'll surprise myself and discover something that I will be using next time I do a painting okay that blue got something something's happening with it but I kind of like it what do you think all right, just a check in here. What is the watercolor book you're using? Again, this book, I just had gotten it from um, Nicholson's Pearless Transparent Watercolors. So I don't know if it comes always exactly in this book, but it's like a style of watercolor that was like over a hundred years old. It's crazy bonkers, but it's got these like saturated um, pages and then you can either cut pieces off and drop them into water and it'll kind of like make liquid watercolor for you or you can just paint right on the surface and then use that watercolor as well. I do believe there are a few other types of watercolor booklets that are more like travel books, which are super cool. Um, so that way you're not having to worry about a palette necessarily, but like you can tell even I get a little bit cray with it and get it kind of messy because I personally like just kind of getting, getting it wet and just going for it. But like, look at how pretty that is. You can see the the oxide or oxide geranium pink let's see what that one looks like because i can't help myself now okay a little dip let's go let's go up here oh hi okay i think my brush was messy but it's like this really light rosy pink pretty yeah so those are 
Nicholson's Pearl S Transparent Watercolors. I believe they have an Instagram too if you want to check out their stuff and get some more of their, um, get some booklets. And then I also just have these little metal, uh, metal ones. Not gonna lie, probably one that was just like in the cabinet at school that's like a really old one. And your good old fashioned 16 count Crayola, baby! I have kind of wanted some of the like fancier watercolor ones, but there's just so many to choose from, so it's, sometimes it's hard to decide which ones you want. Um, and let's see, I want to check my other questions up here. Uh, yep, the book, uh, Nicholson's. And I think we're good. If y'all have any other questions, feel free to drop those into the chat as well. But I think I'm kind of to a finishing point for at least this this kind of experimentation in this play. I'm gonna keep it pretty short today. Um, and then next week we'll be skipping it just cause it is a holiday, but the week after that I'll be back with another guest and we will be creating some more art again on our Monday just to keep our creative juices going. So just a friendly reminder for you, um, if you created with us today, go ahead and share what you've been working on in your story. Tag us at the Art of Ed and um, use our hashtag, hashtag AOU live so I can check it out. Now, if you missed the beginning of this and you wanna see anything else, or you wanna watch some previous chats, cause maybe you're like, I don't know, watercolor's not my thing, but I do wanna do some paper folding. We've got a few um, things saved up into our IGTV tab for the Art of Ed. Will you be posting places to buy these? I don't have a specific place to buy these, but after the fact, cause we had a few questions about it, I'll see if I can snag their Instagram and I'll tag um, the company that creates these. So y'all can check them out if you're interested in those kind of paper watercolors with that, um, uh, with the watercolor, like, pigments stuck right on the top there. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me. Y'all are amazing. I will hope to see you in two weeks, and we'll have another time for us to make art together. So have a nice sunny Monday. Bye!